Frog on Frontier is a game I've worked on where I think I've made almost every mistake you could possibly make. Let's see. Starting development without knowing how to code. Check. Skipping the planning phase and not having a game design doc. Check. Trying to make things perfect without having a minimum viable product. Uh, check. Focusing too much on visuals. Uh, fuck you. But one by one, I am fixing these issues. So that way I don't quit. But sometimes I really want to quit. Like right now. But obviously I'm not going to. Uh... Okay, all memeing aside, last I left off, I really needed a game design doc. Something I could turn to when questions crop up. Because even though you think your concept is really well thought out and clear, it really never is. There's always something you're forgetting, and the design doc will help me stay on track. So I spend a couple solid days doing this. And while all this is happening, I realize I'm gonna have to make big changes to the gameplay of Far Gone Frontier. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay is still the same, it's still gonna be a top-down shooter. But there's a few decisions I made early on in game development because I was afraid, and honestly didn't really know how to code, that over time I sort of built up in the background and I always knew made the game less fun. The exact issue I'm talking about, we can refer to as the room dilemma. When I first started Far Gone Frontier, I was afraid of literally everything in coding. So afraid, in fact, that I made it so the whole game took place on one screen. But it wasn't deliberate. I didn't make these choices because I thought Vampire Survivors was a great genre and I was going to make something like that. And instead, it was more like, I wish I could do Binding of Isaac, but I'm not that smart. And as time went on, I started to add these little Binding of Isaac type elements to my game, like these random secret rooms or these areas off to the side. But the problem was, I really never liked the idea that you just fought waves of enemies in one little area. I get that those kind of games can be fun, but it really wasn't something I was after. And I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this feeling, but when you work on something you're not really interested in, well, the, the passion and the motivation sort of dry up fast. So the burning question is, what's the least amount of effort I can put in to fix that? The answer I landed on was a really rudimentary level generation. Well, I say generation, but it's more like curation. What I do is design a couple different level sizes and shapes, then we add them to a list of potential spawnable rooms. Then every time you clear a room and enter through a door, it picks a random one, spawns it in, while also hooking up an exit door so the player can go back. The main thing to note here is that this is a different strategy than generating a floor. Floor generation to me always came across a little scarier, like we're constructing some kind of maze or dungeon. And there's a lot of pressure to make that content fun and not like boring dead ends or just uninteresting gameplay. Because I'm just going one room at a time, all I really have to do is set up some basic rules. Like let's say every fifth room is a shop or maybe every 10th room is the boss. With this, I'm hoping it's a fair balance between the two ideas. Because the player is clearing rooms and moving on to the next one, there's a sense of progression, but everything's actually kept in a really linear fashion. So I don't get bogged down with dungeon design. Actually, at first when I was putting this together, I tried to make it way more complicated. I had it so the exit of any of the rooms could be four directions. This was just a bad idea. My thought process was that it was going to be fun because it's more random. That's not the case. It wasn't fun at all. Because I'm letting the player go back and visit rooms for reasons I'll get into, it was a kind of a nightmare to figure out where you came from and where you're going next. At one point to try to solve this, I drew up these signs and they always point to where the boss room is. But this was not a good solution. Instead, the, the answer was just to make it way more simple. After taking a step back to think about it, I realized that the solution was to have the player always enter from the left and then exit from the right. So regardless of any craziness or confusion, you realize left is always back and right is always forward. This way we establish some level of progress through a dungeon without you ever getting lost. And for now, I'm pretty happy with this level of dungeon building. Although one interesting thing to touch on here is that no levels are being deloaded. And I'm not sure if that's a bad thing and that's gonna come back to bite me in the future. I mean, right now when I work on this game, I use like a, an old 1070 Ti from 2017. Paired with some ancient Ryzen CPU, I think I tend to get a lot of leeway because it's all just 2D pixel art. Although people will tell me I could optimize by doing X, Y, and Z, I feel like this way is really easy and convenient. All the loading in of assets is happening when you walk through the dungeon the first time and it fades to black so there's no visual stutter but this way I, I don't have to save anything so let's say there's a room and by chance it rolled that there's a secret door there I don't have to save all that data and then reload the asset later and make sure it's the right secret room on the right spot like I said this, this might be a critical failure of mine to do it this way but it seems so easy and convenient that we're gonna give it a shot until something goes horribly wrong also you might be wondering why are all the rooms vertical this was really simple I want the game playable in ultra ride with the least amount of changes to anything I do so I figured if you could just see infinitely into the abyss on the left and right side then that's fine boom ultra wide solved for Look how wide it is. Oh, wow, that's amazing. To be fair, though, I did learn this when I was doing the single room design. I'm just taking it and reapplying it here. Okay, so I think it's a good time to sort of take stock. We put together these rooms. It sort of gives the player, theoretically, a sense of progression. But why do we do this? I say we. It's it's just me. I think my brain's broken. It's definitely broken. But I think the answer is I'm chasing this Binding of Isaac style of resource management. It occurred to me that that's what I really am after. That's what I really like about that game. You can play the game normally and go right to the boss, but you have these options to go back and get every little bit of resource out of a floor. Although, before I get into those resources, one thing 
that Isaac didn't have that I wish it did was some kind of fast travel. I noticed that was something Enter the Gungeon did really well, where you would just bring up a map and go to where you've already been. So for Far Gone Frontier, I realized that that would be the best solution. That way you're not spending all this time walking backwards through the dungeon. For now, I just set up these really simplistic icons, which would be really nice to expand upon so we can see what each room has in it. But without getting too far ahead of myself, I think it's a good place to start. And it works really simply. Whenever you go into a new room, it adds a new room icon to the map. And then as long as there are no enemies on the floor, it lets you fast travel to any of the previous locations. I even make a separate icon for when there's a utility room in the top. And you might be thinking, what's a utility room? I'm glad you asked. It's finally time to add fun little crazy rooms to Fargon Frontier. Working on games isn't easy. Trust me, I complain about it literally all the time. And all I make are little dumb internet games for challenges. Even that, it's hard. But luckily, there's help out there, like the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant.org. Brilliant has an insane amount of courses, from math and science to programming and AI. But you're not just putting on videos and sitting back and watching. The whole process is incredibly hands-on. I always personally found that if I wasn't participating, it was incredibly hard for me to absorb the information when I was trying to learn from other sources online. But luckily, that's where Brilliant really shines. My personal go-to has always been programming with Python because it matches up so closely to GDScript which also opens the door to just being less scared about coding and programming in general. Brilliant will even ask you your daily goal. Whether you want to spend five minutes a day or 20 minutes a day, it's something I always appreciated to help me stay consistent. And like I said, there's way more than just programming. If you want to try it yourself, you can go to brilliant.org forward slash MZ, where you can get started with Brilliant for free and 20% off the annual premium subscription. I want to thank Brilliant so much for sponsoring this video. And with that, let's get into it. I was saying before that Binding of Isaac has these resources that are optional for you to explore. And a big part of that is having these rooms that aren't filled with enemies. They aren't simply just item rooms for you to get some kind of reward, a lot of times they're what I would refer to as utility rooms. Somewhere where you can spend a resource in return for some effect. Binding of Isaac has so many of these between their gambling rooms and their fighting rooms. They always felt super important as a way to give the player choice. So for my design doc, I go through and try to make a list of interesting rooms that I want in my game. And some of them are super obvious. I already had a shop, so it's easy to imagine that as a room in the game. And in older versions of Fargon Frontier, there was this item room in the very beginning, so we can use assets there. And there was also already a challenge room, although we have to recode everything from scratch. So I really wasn't in a horrible spot. We already had three rooms going into this. Although if you know me, I always like adding new stuff, so I worked on this wishing well with the idea that you throw money into the well and then it makes some kind of reward. It's always more fun to work on the new interesting stuff, so I start with the wishing well and figure out how can I add this to the game? Well, not just that. How can we add utility rooms to the game in a way that's going to be expandable in the future? I don't want to make a wishing well room that only works for the desert. I want it to work for every floor that I end up doing. That, and this is going to sound kind of weird, but I figured out early on I don't want multiple sizes. The less variables I have, the more easy it is to plug in different rooms at any given time. And for whatever reason, less variables makes my brain feel less overwhelmed. Realms, so we're leaning that direction. Speaking of less variables, utility rooms are always north. That's super easy for me to wrap my head around, so we just lock that in. So now, when I generate a room, I only have to ask a couple basic questions to figure out, hey, do you put a wall here, or we open this up to add a room? Because we stack our main rooms a thousand pixels apart, I don't have to do any weird teleporting of the player. Instead, I just created this modular camera for the room that snaps the camera into position, while also changing the canvas modulate, which turns out is really important. Because all these rooms are going to have their own vibe and art aesthetic, I want to make sure they look consistent floor to floor. It's actually kind of funny, I was going back and playing Dark Souls 1 and noticed they sort of do this too. I remember entering Blight Town for the first time and noticing everything sort of gets green and colored in a different way. Same idea here, and it helps create the illusion of atmosphere. From here, I get the wishing well in. I personally am a big fan of having the least amount of UI possible, which I think I totally get from Binding of Isaac. So instead of walking up to the wishing well and having a prompt saying, do you want to donate money? It just donates. You walk up to it, it takes money away from you, and then I draw this little animation of a coin falling into water. I create a list of like 20 or 30 position 2D nodes so the coins know where to fall. The longer you stand here donating, the faster it goes, which I actually find to be incredibly endearing, until finally it reaches a randomized point and we could spawn a chest. And that's kind of as simple as it needs to be. I do this two times, two different places for chests to spawn. And then because sometimes I don't know where to stop, I allow you to donate for a third time, which takes a little bit longer, but then opens up this path that leads into the fountain. It's important to note that this path doesn't go anywhere yet, but you know, uh, it will eventually, maybe. And maybe it opens a door to the fish gods or some interesting thing happens there. I am showing self-restraint though and stopping it because I'm trying to get the bare bones in. And actually that's where I have to leave off for now. I have so many more rooms to make, but the essence of a floor and a dungeon is kind of coming together and I'm happy with it for the most part. Truth be told, I'm actually just working way too much right now at my other job. It's been consistently 55 to 60 hour work weeks, week after week, and it makes it hard to find motivation, as hard as that is to say. I am by no means giving up, but I'd be lying if I said I'd rather just work on art for someone else's game than keep doing this. As it stands now, my mindset is just trying to get through the summer, back to a place where work wasn't the only thing I did. I'll keep you guys updated. As always, thanks for watching. Thank you so much for my Patreon supporters. You guys are literally the best. I want to thank you so much for supporting the channel. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.